Alright, what's good YouTube? We're back to another reaction. Today, we got a video from Kurz. We've got a geoengineering horrible idea that we might have to do. Really interested to see what this is about. Before we do get into this video, I do have a Patreon. The link will be down below in the description. There's videos on there that I can't upload to YouTube. There's some really good Kurz videos that I was unable to upload to YouTube. We've got Stellar Engines, really good ant video. You also get a few more benefits as well if you guys are interested in that. The link is down below in the description. Right, geoengineering. Let's check it out, man. By the end of the 21st century, humanity is becoming desperate. Decades of heat waves and droughts have led to oh, unusual harvests, while the warming oceans yield fewer fish each year. The UK is getting the way zones, too hot. Millions suffer from famines, and resource wars have made millions more flee to the north. Yep. As things quickly get worse, in an act of desperation, the world's governments decide to enact an emergency plan. It's far from certain that a grim scenario like this will play out, but the failure of world leaders to effectively address climate change makes it far from Aww. impossible. So, in the near future, it might become Poor necessary koalas, to try man. something radical to slow down rapid climate change. Right, what is this going to be? Geoengineering. Interventions so massive in scale that they might undo centuries of human behavior. Holy shit, how? Make everything much worse. Oh. What is geoengineering? <laughs> is it really an option? And what if it goes wrong? I'm actually excited for this. It is, this seems very interesting. Geoengineering methods vary from fantastic ones like constructing giant light sails in space oh, to seeding shit. clouds with salt or wilder ones like fertilizing the oceans with iron to speed up the growth of trillions of algae cells. Oh shit. In this video, we'll focus on an intervention we could see during our lifetimes. Stratospheric aerosol injection. A clunky term that means spraying stuff very high up in the atmosphere to keep the sun away. What Keeping the, the fuck? Sun away. CO2 doesn't heat up the planet on its own. Almost all of the energy on Earth comes from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation. About 71% of this energy is absorbed by the Earth's surface and atmosphere. This absorbed energy is emitted again as infrared radiation. And CO2 is able to trap this infrared radiation and keep it in the atmosphere for a while. You can compare this effect with snuggling under a blanket in the morning. Even in a really cold room, your body emits infrared radiation and the yeah. air between your body and the blanket traps it and creates a warm and comfy feeling. So one way to cool down the planet... Man, do you know what? The UK has been hot for like a good four four months now. And when I mean hot, it's like you can't breathe in the UK. If you're from the UK, you know exactly what I mean. Man, I miss the cold weather. It's just like snuggling in blankets and stuff. You know, and just getting warm underneath the covers. Man, it's, I can't breathe nowadays. Be to prevent energy from getting trapped I legit trapped can't breathe in this room. Blanket, which is already happening naturally. About 29% of the solar radiation hitting Earth is reflected back to space by bright surfaces like ice, deserts, snow, or clouds. More reflection, less energy, less warming. We can look at nature for inspiration. Specifically, the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption, the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Aside from massive devastation and almost 900 dead, scientists wow. noted its strong impact on the global climate. The explosion ejected millions of tons of particles and gas as high as the stratosphere, which hung around there for a while. The stuff that's interesting for geoengineering is sulfur dioxide, a nasty smelling and invisible gas. High in the atmosphere, it produced a haze of sulfuric acid droplets that mixed with water and created giant veils. What I don't get right, they're going to talk about like a massive aeroplane. A massive plane, right? That's going to let out all of this stuff in the atmosphere. How is it going to stay there? Are they going to do it in the outer atmosphere? See, that would be interesting. But then again, how will it still stay there? Like... These veils reduce the sunlight reaching the Earth's surface by roughly 1%. Global average temperatures dropped by 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. It took three years until this cooling effect Holy had shit. stopped. Humans could imitate this process by injecting sulfur particles directly into the stratosphere. According to some scientists, this might be surprisingly easy to do, and we don't even need a lot of new technology for it. Wow, okay. According to one study, it also might be pretty cheap compared with the costs of rapid climate change. A small fleet of specialized aircraft could ascend once a year and distribute aerosols along the equator from where they would be spread around the world. 
projections assumed that injecting between five and eight wow, megatons of fuck? material per year would reflect. How, how would that like? Oh wait, they said it was invisible, didn't they? I was gonna say like, how would that look if you look in the sky and it's just pink? <laughs> enough sunlight to slow down or even stop global warming, giving us precious time to transition away from fossil fuels. Unfortunately, there might be a few unhappy side effects. Uh, there are a number of potential issues with aerosol injections. Rainfall patterns could change, which could negatively affect agriculture and cause famine. Right. Billions of people could be affected in the worst case. That also, does sound after good. the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption, the acid water veils not only cooled down the surface, they also heated up the stratosphere. As it turns out, acid is bad for the ozone layer, and the ozone hole over Antarctica was the largest it has ever been. Injecting sulfur particles over decades could have a similar effect. Scientists have already suggested using a combination of different minerals that might have much less harmful effects on the ozone layer, but more research and experiments need to be done to make sure this could work. But even if we don't damage the ozone layer, there are other risks. Politicians and industry might use the cooling effect as an excuse to delay the switch to a carbon neutral economy. True. Even if geoengineering true, slows true, down true. global warming, humanity is like the reason why we're switching right now. What did they say? Like 2050? Uh, I'm pretty sure they said 2025, but we're getting closer. 2050, like there's not going to be any gas cars. It's going to have to be electric. If we did this, they would prolong it. They would. They would. They, they, they would think they got more time. Someone else could deal with it. They're not in a rush. You know what I mean? Right now, we're in a rush. We got to get shit done. Still adding extra CO2 to the atmosphere. More CO2 in the air means that the oceans absorb more CO2, which makes them more acidic. This is already beginning to be deadly to huge ecosystems like coral reefs, and the longer this continues, the more severe the effects will be. But it gets worse. Once we start pumping particles into the atmosphere on a massive scale, we might be forced to do so for a long time, or we could risk a termination shock. Huh? What that means is that if humanity continues to enrich the atmosphere with CO2, but at the same time prevents the planet from heating up by blocking solar radiation, we're sitting on a time bomb. Once we stop geoengineering, the natural cycle will take over again and Earth would heat up. But after a few decades of keeping the planet artificially cold while still releasing massive amounts of CO2, it would heat up much, much quicker. An oh, increase wow. in temperature that would take 50 years Wait, today why? would happen in just 10 years. Such a temperature shock in such a short time would disrupt every major system on Earth so much that it would be impossible to adapt in time. The worst case scenario could be dramatic famines and the rapid destruction of ecosystems. Humanity might survive, but the survivors would inhabit an unfamiliar and hostile world. The best case scenario is that once the world has finally fully understood the existential danger of rapid climate change, geoengineering can buy us a crucial decade or two. Time to transition our economies and maybe even pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. Yeah, ev everything needs changing ASAP, maybe bro. With technologies that we'll discuss in a future video. Everything needs changing. Conclusion. Geoengineering is a scary concept. It's not a solution to climate change, and it might even be a welcome excuse for the fossil fuel industry to delay the end of the fossil fuel age. Over the last few decades, geoengineering has been so controversial that it stopped many scientists from doing the experiments necessary to understand it better. But <laughs> blankly opposing geoengineering is short-sighted. The sad truth is we are already running a geoengineering experiment. We're testing how fast the world changes if we add about 40 billion tons of CO2 each year. This wow. experiment is about to get really exciting. Hopefully, we'll never have to use geoengineering. But if we need to in the future, we better have done the science. We better be prepared. Really cool or video to be fair. panicking humanity might accidentally oh, press the self-destruct button. You probably won't have to do any of that yourself. Really, really, really good video. Uh, really enjoyed that one. GN Engine, it's really cool to be fair. And it's really actually cool that we do have a backup plan if needed. Um, but no, no, no. The, the, uh, the governments need to put their foot down and hurry up and uh, get fossil fuels changed to like electrics and stuff. So really good video. Really enjoyed that one. Hopefully you guys did as well. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe for more content. And I'll see you all in the next video.